Today's presentation is going to be a visualization topic, uh, Introduction to Visual Molecular Dynamics. Uh, VMD is a package for um, visualizing the outputs of bimolecular and molecular dynamic simulations. It's an open source project that has been around for almost a quarter century, since, since 1995 and is a cross-platform tool, so uh, uh, runs on Windows, Mac, and Unix. And uh, presenting today, we have um, uh, Dmitry uh, Rasmanov from the University of Calgary. So Dmitry is a data scientist and uh, a Westgrid high-performance computing analyst at the University of Calgary, and he joined the Westgrid team a few years ago. And he has a background in uh, bimo bimolecular simulations. And uh, I think without further ado, I will pass the microphone to Dmitry. Hello, everyone. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you for joining the, con uh, the, the webinar. Today we are going to talk about uh, uh, VMD, with molecular visualizations with VMD. So I'm going to share my um, screen so you can see the presentation. Here we go. So uh, I have a background. So I have a PhD in theoretical chemistry, and I did a postdoc as a, a biophysicist. So I did have a chance to use uh, VMD myself. So today I'm going to share what I've learned about it and uh, how it can be useful. So what is VMD? VMD is a molecular visualization program for uh, displaying and working with molecules and trajectories. So it's been uh, known uh, for being very fast because it's written in C++ and it uh, supports all kinds of hardware accelerators. So in this case, it is um, sometimes indispensable when you work with large biological systems. There are a number of alternatives when you want to create uh, images, but VND is uh, really high performance. So it also, also supports scripting and it knows lots of um, molecular formats and it can render high quality images so it's a very good tool. So how do you get VND? Um, if uh, the computer you want to use doesn't have it you can download it for free from uh, the VMD's website, uh, the website of theoretical computational biophysics group at the University of Illinois, the Valley campaign. So it's uh, distributed for free, but uh, getting it requires a registration. <coughs> so, so you need to create an account because it's not an entirely free program in terms of copyright, but you can use it for free. And if you use it for your work, you, um, you must cite it. So the citation is at the bottom of this slide, and you can also find details on the VMD's web website. So VMD is a very uh, complex tool. Um, so these are the topics we can uh, talk about uh, before and learn about before uh, we can use all the power VMD has. So today we are not going to cover all these topics. So the, the topics which are showed in green, and we are going to talk today about. Uh, right, so VMD can be started uh, by several ways. So you can uh, click uh, icon short shortcut on your desktop or maybe in your uh, launcher, and it will start VMD, but it will start VMD probably in your home directory. So if you want to work with your molecules, you will have to navigate uh, to the uh, directory of interest. And sometimes it's not, uh, not, not convenient, uh, not, not for me at least. So <clears throat> I prefer to start it from the command line. I open a terminal in uh, the directory I'm going to work in, and then uh, you need to either type the full path to the binary, or VMD binary, or um, you can export the um, path to the directory into your path variable, and then just type VMD. And this will bring up three, uh, two graphical windows, and VMD also prints some uh, uh, information into the terminal window. So the one window is the main VMD control window, and another one is the OpenGL graphical 
uh, window for uh, molecular graphics. So this main window is, is really important, so we are going to look at it right now. So the functions in VMD are separated uh, in menus. So the file menu deals with the loading module molecules uh, states um, where logging commands is useful and also with rendering. So the mole molecule menu um, section um, controls how VMD treats a specific molecule loaded into it. So a molecule is a content of a single uh, molecular file. So it may be several molecules, but it is still called a molecule. Uh, it, this, this menu uh, is not very useful because there are other better ways of doing the same things in VMD. So graphics is an important menu. Uh, it brings up floating dialogues for various uh, um, functionality of VMD. So we are going to use it today quite a bit. So display uh, contains the commands about the um, how VMD displays and renders the, the molecular representation. So mouse menu changes the way how uh, the functionality of the mouse pointer. Extensions contain uh, mostly third party scripts and um, plugins for VMD, which can be used uh, for analysis, building simulations, uh, etc. And each of those extensions can be a topic for a separate uh, seminar. So we're not going to touch that today. And help is clear. So now let's uh, load the molecule. So um, at the end of the seminar, I will uh, uh, provide you with the link for that molecule. It's a small peptide. It comes from the Gromax tutorial. So and I'm going to use it today as an example for this uh, webinar. So if we uh, use a menu um, file and uh, choose the new molecule uh, dialog, so it brings this floating dialog. So in BMD, the interface is a, a bit different from what most people get used to because the dialogs don't close once you use it, and they stay up until you close them. So this allows uh, doing multiple things without uh, going to the menu, but it can be a bit confusing. So in this case, we make sure that we load the files for a new molecule and we uh, navigate to the uh, speptide.pdb file and then click load and then close the dialog. So after that, we see that the molecule uh, shows up in, um, in the graphical window. So this is a short peptide of 146 atoms and uh, of 18 uh, amino acid residues. And the molecule is also shown in the main uh, control window. So let's have a closer look at the main control window. So there are two uh, areas here besides the menu bar. So the top one is the uh, list of the loaded molecules. And the bottom one deals with the trajectory animation control. It's like a video tape recorder or something like that. So we are not going to use this today, but this is very self-explanatory. So the molecule, a list of the molecules shows the molecule name, its number, number of atoms, number of frames in uh, the trajectory, so just one. Uh, volumetric data, we don't have any here and also status flags. So the meaning is that this is a top, active, drawn, and fixed. If the flag is red, it means it's not it's in inactive. So the top and uh, active, we don't need today, but the drawn is an important, it uh, turns off and on the drawing of the molecule. And uh, fixed means that the viewpoint will be fixed uh, for that molecule. So it is inactive, so it's not fixed. Right, now let's bring up the graphical representations um, control. So it is in the graphics menu, and this is, the, this is going to be the main tool for today's presentation. So that's very important. 
uh, very important control in VMD. So uh, at the top of that uh, control, there is a list uh, selector of the molecule. So if you want to apply uh, changes to a specific molecule, you need to select it here. And we have only one, so it is selected. The next uh, area is the list of representations. So each molecule can have multiple representations, so quite many if uh, you work on a complex visualization. And um, right, and the representations in VMD is a kind of central uh, concept. Uh, a representation is defined by four uh, parameters. So atom selection, a drawing method, coloring method, and material. Uh, so the rest of the control window is dedicated to those. Uh, so the atom selection is given by the expression in the selected atom uh, text box. So in this case, it is all. The drawing method coloring scheme and material controls are uh, on the draw style tab. So in this case, it is lines uh, as a method. Coloring method, method is name, and uh, it's a pack material. And also, each drawing method has um, a set of parameters which uh, can be changed uh, below in this area. And if you notice, there are even more options in this uh, tapped switch control. We'll talk about some of them later. Now, before doing any visualization in BMD, I personally like to set up my workplace. So I maximize the graphical representation and also I have essential uh, controls visible at all times. Now in this case, I prefer to have the main control in the left top corner. Right below it, I would put the graphical representations control. And then I will maximize the uh, graphics window uh, to the rest of the screen. There is slight overlap, but when you click on the, um, on the control, they float up and uh, it's, not, it's not a big deal. It's very convenient. Now also I find that uh, using black background is somewhat depressing. Uh, and sometimes even hindering uh, my, my perception. So uh, I like to change it to gray. For this, in the graphics uh, menu, we select colors. And this brings up another floating uh, dialog, so which you can, we, we can use to change all kinds of colors in VMD. But in this case, we are going to change the background. So first, you select a category, display. And there are all kinds of categories here. And then when you uh, select display, it gives you uh, properties which can be, uh, for which the color can be changed. So in this case, we select background and pick the gray color. The gray uh, number, names of the colors are actually uh, predefined uh, definitions, which can be changed using the color editor at the bottom of that dialog. So, um, yes, and then we have to close it. So now this is what uh, the represent, uh, my workplace looks like. And we also uh, can change the default uh, drawing method to licorice instead of lines. Um, in this case, uh, we have uh, the molecule. And we also have the 3D axis. They are quite helpful uh, for uh, maintaining your orientation when you work with the molecule. Sometimes it's hard to uh, get back to the view you've had before. But if you remember how that uh, axis orientation looked like, you can easily get back. It's useful to have. But sometimes you want to switch them off for final rendering. Now, uh, once uh, BMD starts, by default, the mouse, mouse uh, mode is set to rotate. So in this case, if you click on the screen and move the mouse, it will rotate the molecule. Actually, it will rotate the viewpoint around the molecule. So if you uh, move the mouse left to right, it will rotate um, the orbit 
the viewpoint around the y-axis of the screen, vertical axis of the screen. If you move it up and down, it will use the x-axis of the screen, the horizontal axis. And you need to provide additional uh, input to rotate around the normal axis to the screen perpendicular. So in, um, in Linux and Windows, I believe it's the right mouse button. In Mac computer, that would be the command button. So you press it and then you move from left to right and it will rotate the molecule uh, around the normal axis to the screen. There are other ways uh, to navigate the <clears throat> viewpoint around the molecule. Uh, so rotate is the default. Uh, then there is a translate mode, uh, scale, which uh, zooms and zooms out. And there are two, um, buttons or commands uh, to center on a uh, center the viewpoint well, point uh, center the view on a specific atom or bond so you you can uh, click on that object and that will be become the center of attention and there is also useful uh, command reset view when you can go back to the initial uh, view position so if you want to restart your work or something like that. These commands are uh, available as hotkeys and uh, you can also change that from the mouse uh, menu in the, in the menu bar. So with time you learn the hotkeys and you stop going to the menu. It, it becomes very natural. Now let's explore the visualization methods. Uh, so we switch here the licorice representation to the VDW, which means Van der Waals um, method. So it uses Van der Waals spheres to represent atoms. So this is, has a long historical background uh, for this uh, visualization. Um, it's used in labs in you know wooden models. So this is an atomic based atomistic uh, visualization. So in this case, we see all the atoms and they colored in the here by according to the, to the name. So it's a typical chemistry, uh, chemical model. So here we see different atomistic uh, representations VMD supports. So on the left, we have a lines representation. So in this case, uh, bonds are represented by uh, thin lines and atoms are just uh, colors. Uh, the each bond is colored half goes to one atom, half to another one. The benefit, this is the default representation for VMD. The benefit is very lightweight. So if you by accident load a huge molecule, it will not tax VMD too much but it's not very useful. So uh, usually you want to switch from that uh, to something else rather quickly. So the next one is licorice. Uh, this is a very useful representation in my, in my view. So it's very similar to uh, the lines, but the molecules looks better because this is a 3D rendering. Uh, on the other hand, it's not too cluttered because atoms are not uh, balls, but uh, just part of the bonds. And it gives you a pretty good sense of the structure. So the next representation is CPK. Uh, and uh, in this case, the bonds are drawn as, uh, as uh, sticks and the atoms as balls. And um, it's useful mostly for small chemistry related models, like in organic chemistry, something like this, uh, small molecules. For biological systems, it uh, became, becomes, it's very expensive to render and um, it's too cluttered, so it's not really useful for us today. The Van der Waals representation is, um, it looks quite ugly, but, uh, and also it can be quite, can feel quite cluttered, but it is useful in a way that it shows the actual um, size of the atoms, so it really demonstrates the volume of the molecule but it's not it's not very nice so in this case the quick surf representations which is on the uh, very right is like a new van der waals so it does give you the sense of the volume of the molecule but it's much cleaner and better looking 
So now let's try something different. Uh, in this case, if we change the representation drawing to the new cartoon and change the coloring scheme to the uh, secondary structure, uh, then uh, this is what will come out. So it shows the structure which is secondary to the uh, chemical structure. Chemical structure is the just sequence of uh, atomic um, atoms and bonds, while secondary structure uh, formed by uh, long chain molecules which when they coil and twist into, into something else. Uh, not something else, but they, they, they form in some stable 3D motif. So here we see that this peptide actually uh, forms a well-defined secondary structure. So, and uh, VMT recognizes that and draws it according, uh, accordingly. So in here, the most prominent part is al alpha helix, and there is a coil. These are names for the secondary structure uh, motifs. This is another coil, and this piece is called turn, and there is another coil. So let's uh, get some background in chemistry here. So there are 21 amino acids, which are used to build uh, living, living things, proteins. So the two amino acids are shown on the right. And uh, uh, this is how they form peptide bonds. So amino acids can uh, polymerize, join together. Uh, so they have uh, an amine end and a carboxyl end, and also a side chain. So when these two ends interact, uh, carboxyl and amine ends, then the water molecule goes away and the peptide bond is formed. In this case, we just formed from two amino acids, we formed the dipeptide. So, and this chain together NCC, NCC is called a backbone. And the, these radicals represent anything. And these are called side chains. So, and this um, backbone can be quite long. So if there are up to 50 amino acids in a chain, this molecule is called peptide. If it is more than 50 amino acids, this molecule would be called a protein. That's the only difference. And the backbone of the chain twists and coils and turns, and it forms uh, stable structures, uh, 3D structures, which um, uh, are called secondary structures, and the most um, uh, most um, common are alpha helixes, helices that we just saw, and beta sheets. Beta sheets uh, switch back uh, formations of uh, of a backbone chain, uh, which form a flat kind of sheet-like uh, structures. So we are not going to see them today. Now, this is the comparison of a secondary structure-based drawing methods in BMT. On the left, we have a trace. So that's probably a very uh, rough representation uh, of, um, of the backbone. I'm not sure why anybody would want to use it, but um, it's the beginning. Then the tube is an extension of it. In this case, the backbone um, is smoothed using uh, splines, I guess. Looks much cleaner. Uh, the next one is ribbons. So in this case, it is similar to tube representation, but it also is information about uh, orientation of the sign chains, side chains in um, the secondary structure. So you can tell that the normal direction would be the direction of the side chain. Uh, the new ribbon it is the same thing. It's just different way to represent this band. And uh, it looks cleaner. So it probably supersedes all the previous uh, methods here. And another one, uh, the cartoon. Cartoon is um, a representation which already does assignment for you. So it recognizes different uh, motifs and represents them differently. So uh, the turn and coils uh, look as just tubes because they are not well defined. Uh, but the 
alpha helix is shown as a cylinder and it does help to uh, recognize the motifs and see them better in a complex structure. And the new cartoon is, uh, is an attempt to extend that um, representation to make it look better. So instead of cylinder, it uses a uh, helix. Um, it can look better in case of smaller molecules, but it may be too uh, detailed for a big molecule. Now let's uh, go back to the Van der Waals uh, representation. And uh, we can see how difficult to see and uh, the secondary structure in this representation. So th th that's why those are useful. And now we will try to uh, change how uh, VMD renders the, our molecule because uh, it, um, it affects how uh, our final result looks. Um, here on this uh, slide, we can see that different atoms, they, uh, well, same, same kind of atoms at different distances look uh, as uh, of different sizes. And also some of the atoms that even look not, not spherical. This is because, in the, um, because of the perspective screen projection mode. So in this case, VMG renders the molecule like it would be right in front of our nose. So it is, the, the, the representation is a little bit fish-eyed. So now if we go to the display menu and change the represent, uh, projection mode to orthographic or parallel, then um, it gives us a long distance view of the molecule. So in this case, there is not much difference between, well, in parallel way, no difference between the molecules up front and at the back. At the back. This mode may look less 3D, but it is much more helpful when you do quantitative analysis of the structure, if you want to compare to different parts of the molecule and find patterns. Uh, also, uh, yeah. Now, VMD also does a uh, depth skewing by default. Depth skewing helps with 3D um, perception by introducing fog in the scene. And in this case, the molecules which are close to the screen, they are less foggy than the molecules at the, you know, which are far from the screen. It might help, but on the other, on the other hand, it uh, makes the molecule look dull or dusty. So I prefer to turn it off when I work with the molecule. So, and this can be done in the display menu again. Uh, and the last thing we will try. So in the display menu, there is a render mode uh, command. And if we go and change it to GLSL mode, uh, this is how the molecule will look. So you see that the spheres look ideal and this mode is using uh, hardware acceleration. Uh, so it is much faster. It is normally better looking and it really works much better for transparent materials. So we will keep it for the rest of the presentation. This is the comparison before and after what we changed. So this is the perspective projection, depth queuing is on and render mode is normal. So, and on the right, we have this hardware accelerated uh, parallel projection with depth queuing off. So on the right, the molecule really looks brighter and vibrant. And you see how distorted uh, the view using, due to the perspective view here. So this is exactly the same viewpoint, but see how the axis look different from the view with the parallel projection. So, uh, and, and, and also the atoms, you know, these scenes uh, on the left, they are kind of blown up. And uh, on the right, it is much more useful for uh, evaluating the structures. At this point, we already know so, uh, enough for um, about how to use uh, VMD and what it can do. So, and then we will try to learn by doing. So we, we are ready to um, work on a test case. We will create an illustration of that S-peptide molecule. 
We will try to demonstrate the structure of the molecule. We will try to highlight the secondary structure. And also we would like to show the connection between primary and secondary structure representations. We will also would like to demonstrate how large the molecule, what is the volume, and give it an idea about the actual size of the molecule. So let's try it. So uh, first we start by resetting the view. So we will go to the uh, beginning. So we reset the view. And this is what uh, axis goes. So Y is up, X to the right, and Z goes on us. And we will change representation to lines and we will make it uh, thickness four just to make the line representation more visible. Then we will load the same molecule two more times. Um, the reason is that we want to uh, we want to show a lot of uh, information about that molecule. So in doing it on a single model may be uh, not easy. So in this case, we will show three parallel uh, representations to uh, give a better sense of the of the molecule. Uh, so we and because each molecule, even though representations can be different, they cannot occupy different spaces. So that's why we load three three copies of it. Now uh, to tell that these these copies apart. Uh, we double click, uh, we will rename them. So you do, we double click the molecule in the list in the main control. And this brings up a dialog to rename that. So, and we can uh, call the first molecule as uh, S peptide structure. And the other two S peptide cartoon and S peptide volume. And then uh, we will uh, pick select the first, molecule, uh, the first molecule structure and change the representation method to licorice to make it uh, bigger. So it will be easier to pick up with the mouse pointer. Now we will change the mouse, uh, mouse function to the move and molecule. Then we will pick the molecule uh, on screen and move it to the left part of the screen. We'll drag it to the left part of the screen. Then we will repeat the same thing with the molecule uh, copy called volume. So make it licorice and then drag it to the right part of the screen. And then because we already done moving, so we will go to a safe translate mode. Uh, rotate mode is easy to uh, click on screen and turn your representation and then your mo movement uh, or viewpoints may be not exact. So in this case, it's better not to uh, rotate the molecules and translation is very safe. You can always go back. Now uh, for the cartoon representation uh, molecule. We will, uh, we will select it in the uh, representations window and then we'll change the presentation to the new cartoon and secondary structure. And this is what we have at this point. Uh, for the volume molecule, we uh, change the representation to the quick surface, quick surf, and then we'll change resolution to uh, 0 0.50 is uh, in, in the in the uh, representation uh, control window, and we'll say this surface quality quality to max. In this case, uh, this gives us this nice representation. Um, in a matter of fact, that this uh, volume of that uh, representation is less than real. But for this uh, presentation, it just looks better. So um, I use the high resolution. So, uh, but in reality, it may be five-year five uh, representation. Now, because of this uh, main control window and all the uh, dialogues, uh, they tend to uh, 
overlap on, on my molecules. So I'd like to move uh, the whole um, scene a little bit down, uh, and move it from the upper part of the screen to the bottom. And in this case, we can, uh, so I translated my molecules down. And then we also move, want to move the axis up to free up some space. So you can move axis by using the display and axis command, and then choose the upper left location for the, for the axis. Now let's enhance what we have here. So we select the left uh, structure molecule and we create a new representation for it. So we will use again licorice. The selection is all molecules at this, mo mo at this time. And the coloring will take color ID. And in color ID we will pick the color ID 3, which means orange. And this is how it will look after that. So what we want, we want to cover the previous representation with a new one using different uh, atomic selection. Um, because it, it goes after the first one, it completely uh, recolors it. But you might want to increase uh, the bond radius to 0.4 just to make sure it's bigger and it does cover it because in some rendering modes it, it will not work otherwise. And now we will change the selection. Instead of selected at atoms all, we will type here backbone and press enter. And in this case, uh, that's, uh, that representation will only use the atoms included in the backbone of the molecule. And now we see how the backbone actually looks uh, in for the real structure, not in this uh, symbolic uh, backbone representation as, in, as a new cartoon. Um, now, we want to also show that backbone is not the, the whole story. So there are other atoms around the backbone. In this case, we use the cartoon representation and we will show atoms which are not carbons in the side chains of the molecule. So how do we do that? Uh, we will use a Van der Waals uh, drawing mode uh, to highlight the atoms and we'll color them by name. So this is what we want in the chemical sense. And then we go to the selection uh, tab and we'll type this selection. So we use name like N anything or anything as anything. And then we will uh, say this is should not be in the backbone, not backbone. So we will look in more details here. So how do we select atoms? So the selected atoms is a, is a logical expression. So the and this, uh, this expression can be built using the tools provided in the selection tab in the uh, representation control window. So there is a set of predefined definitions, single word definitions like helix, sheet, pi helix, and, 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 and so on. There are buttons which will uh, help joining or resetting or applying. Uh, that selection. And there is also a list of keywords at the bottom. Keywords is like uh, fields, search fields. So if we uh, highlight one of the keyword name, for example, we will get a list of possible values in the value list. So here we see that uh, oxygen in this molecule is not only O, but it also can be OD1, OD2. So we need to select them all if we want to highlight them. And in this case, VMD is very helpful because it supports so-called regular expressions. It's a separate topic uh, if you don't know them. Uh, it's a way of uh, defining text uh, patterns. So and in this case, dot means uh, any character and star means any number of them. So 
then our selection becomes anything which starts with N, anything we, what starts with O, anything what starts with S. So this is one part of the expression, and it should be not backbone. And it works. Now, that representation with the selected bad, 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 heterogene, hetero atoms outside of, of the backbone was too bold. It was completely uh, overwhelming the, um, our new cartoon representation. So to uh, quiet down that, uh, those atoms, we can change the material to be transparent to glass one. There are different materials, so you can try them when you play with VMD yourself. And uh, we will make them smaller. So we changed sphere scale from zero to, uh, from one to 0 0.4. And this is how it looks after this change. And there's a final touch. Um, I would like to add um, some notion of structure. So those atoms are not just floating around, uh, around that uh, secondary structure, but they actually bonded. So, and we can do that by adding a um, uh, subtle um, licorice representation. So if we highlight the new cartoon uh, representation here, and then create, cre create a new one. It will use all selection, same. And then we will change uh, the representation to licorice with the coloring by name and material glass one. And then we also change the bond radius from 0 0.3 to 0 0.1. This creates this kind of subtle uh, structure which overlaps with our new cartoon representation, but it does provide the connection for the uh, atoms we've selected before. And um, now we would like maybe to add a little bit of uh, gloss to um, the volume representation we have on the right. And we can do this by picking materials glossier. So it looks just better than the uh, default opaque material. Now, the last thing we wanted to do is to give a, a sense of the actual dimensions of the molecule. So what we can do, we can um, change the mouse uh, function to labeling and we'll select bonds. Then we can click uh, two atoms on the opposite side of the molecule. Well, in the uh, most clear representation here in the middle. So we click uh, this uh, nitrogen atom at the bottom and uh, well, I click the oxygen atom at the top, but I actually hit the carbon, but in, the, in, in this case, it doesn't matter. And this puts uh, three labels on uh, our uh, visualization. So two atomic labels, and also it gives us the distance of, between those two atoms. So we know that this molecule is about 32 extrom and some long, so this does the trick. But those, uh, those atomic labels are extra we didn't want. So in this case, we can bring the labels uh, dialog in the graphics menu. And uh, we can uh, uh, operate with our labels here, interact. So there is a drop down list which selects the kinds of labeling we are dealing with. So if uh, we want atoms, we select atoms. We see these two atomic lab uh, labels and we can delete them using the delete button. And then we can change to the bonds labels and see that there is a bond label, but we want to keep it, so we keep it. And this is how it looks in the end. So at this point, I would say that our visualization is done. Uh, so that's the final product, but now we need to uh, produce the, the actual rendering. So the rendering is done by um, accessing the render command in the file menu. And also I removed the axes because I don't need them in the uh, final um, 
rendering of, uh, of my visualization. And this brings the render dialog. So VMD is, uh, the idea is that VMD is kind of using the external programs to render uh, the models. But some of the external renderers are actually built into VMD, so, but, but the, the interface is still the same. So when we render uh, a scene, we need to provide three, uh, three uh, pieces of information. So first we need to select the renderer, then there will be a file name. As I understand, it depends how a VMD was built, but the default uh, format is Targa. So it's a, it's a graphical format, but not many software does, doesn't, uh, does understand it. So you, you might need to uh, re, re, uh, convert it to something else. Uh, so changing the extension didn't work for me. So T TGA is good, but you can change the name to something more sensible. And the render command is not, um, that often, uh, it doesn't have to be changed, so don't touch it. And then you press start rendering and it will render it. So these are the renderers from my uh, Mac version of VMD. Uh, so there are two renderers which are built in. So it is called snapshot. So in this case, um, VMD is just taking a snapshot of the, of the graphical window. It's very simple and it is done by the graphical driver in your, in your computer. And the, another one is the Tachyon. Uh, it's an uh, internal in-memory Tachyon version. So it's an, actually an external program, but VMD has it compiled inside. And uh, it's a very good ray tracing renderer. And it produces results very similar to a snapshot, probably because VMD uses Tachyon routines to actually render molecules during, uh, during the work uh, time. And pretty much every other renderer requires installation of additional software, so they don't work on my computer right now. So and this is the final uh, result. Uh, this is a Tachyon rendered uh, image. So we have our uh, structure on the left. We have a secondary structure in the middle. We have a volume on the right. We know that the length of the molecules is about 32 angstrom. We see how that secondary structure actually relates to the uh, molecular structure on the left because we highlighted the backbone. And also we see that a secondary structure in the middle is not all the story, but there are other atoms uh, in the side chains around it. So in this case, I would say that we completed our uh, goals and um, that's great. And also it's interesting that the structural um, representation really hides all this secondary structure uh, motifs. But if we use our uh, model here and we align uh, the middle model uh, to look through the channel, of the alpha, alpha helix, we really see that channel in the uh, true well, atomistic models, which would be difficult to find without without the secondary structure representation. And I would like to conclude that uh, seminar with uh, some references to how to find information about VND. So this is VND's home page. So all the documentation and downloads are available there. So this is the direct, direct links to frequently asked questions about VMD. That's the documentation on the VMD website. It's about the current version of VMD. Uh, there is also a link to the documentation about VMD on Compute Canada. It's not much, but it probably will be extended at some point. And these are two, two links to the PDB data bank. Uh, that is a website which contains, it's a portal. You can uh, find all kinds of um, protein structures there. So any new structure is posted uh, there, I believe. And they have thousands of proteins to play with and to educate yourself if you want to. And there is also a similar website, the Nuclear Acid Data Bank. 
So it contains uh, structures of DNA and RNA molecules. And with this, I would like to conclude it and thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I can answer them. Thank you, Dmitry. You can unmute yourself if you have a question. So the unmute button, if you mouse over the video uh, window, the unmute, um, the unmute button is going to be somewhere uh, at the bottom center. And I guess I have a couple of questions or notes. Uh, so VMD is also available on our clusters. Uh, I see the gram, the new cluster Beluga, that's going to go uh, online probably next month. And uh, so to use VMD on the clusters, uh, I guess the easiest way would be to open a remote desktop, VNC or X2Go. So in VMD, there is no, there is no client server uh, set up, right? No, I believe not. Uh, you, but you can, you can start the X11 session if you want something quick. Uh, VND also supports uh, non-graphical uh, execution models so when there is no graphical window. So if you want to render images in a non-interactive non way, but it requires additional you know, time to explain all that stuff. Okay, thank you. And so uh, another question. Uh, you, when, so when you loaded the, mo the, the same molecule three times and showed it uh, three times, is it, so if you have a large molecule that takes a lot of space, that molecule is going to be uh, taking three times as much memory, is that correct? So yes. Mm -hmm. But this is the power of VMD because VMD is very efficient in uh, memory uh, usage and it's also very fast. So usually handling three molecules is not an issue because VMD can handle trajectories with thousands of frames relatively okay. easily. So, but other software which uh, like uh, Chimera or um, Molpy, they use Python behind and that would be an issue for them. But VMD is especially known for being very efficient and fast. Okay. So when you have these uh, three molecules, uh, do the, when you spin it, when you spin the, um, uh, the view with the mouse, uh, do the, all three of them spin at the same time? Yes, the way how I showed it in this presentation, yes. But there are ways of um, making uh, viewpoints on each molecule and they would spin kind of not together, but each of them will spin in place. But VMD, you know, this is the area when bugs show up and uh, sometimes it not works exactly the way you want. So effectively, I, it was a bit of artificial. I decided to do this three model at the same time for this presentation, but in practice, I would probably do the three models separately and would just join them in, in, in GIMP or Photoshop or something like that. Okay. All right, anyone else has questions for Dmitry? Okay, uh, if there are no questions, uh, I pasted uh, the link to the data file and the slides. Um, it's, so the slides are available for downloading now. And uh, we are gonna post the recording of, these, um, of this webinar on our training materials website. So there are a couple of places, it's the same website, but there are a couple of places where you can find it. One is if you click in the top menu, uh, tools visualization, and the second place if you click on domains and molecular dynamics, so you will find this, this recording. Probably in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna post it. And then if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send us email directly to Dmitry or uh, another way to do, uh, send an email to support at computecanon.ca. And if it's a VMD question, it's probably gonna go to one of us and we'll be able to answer it. So thank you very much everybody for attending. And thank you, Dmitry, for, for presenting. Thank you.